Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's episode of the Watch Before You Die podcast. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year, depending on when this gets edited. And uh, we're just happy you're with us. What was the movie? The Farewell is the movie that we just been watching. Yeah. Um, I'm Justin. This guy's Brian. Oh. That guy's Ben. <laughs> that is an absolute this, edge of the monitor. This, this, and this is, <laughs> this is nobody. Correct. Yeah, that's a good point. I yeah. Am I, is it this way? Yep. I'm down here. Yeah. You're down there? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> At least nobody's above me. Anyway, this is... This is off to a bang and roll of a start. Let's, I don't know what I'm doing, man. Let's, let's talk a little bit about what we thought the other people thought about the movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, I, I'll go first because <laughs> uh, 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 my anticipation is that you guys uh, said that this was a very good movie. You guys are going to rate this very high. I think this is probably going to be – my prediction is this is probably going to be the highest rated movie we've done. Okay. I mean, this movie is right up Justin's alley as far as movies go, that I would guess. So um, I think he probably put this very high. Yeah. As far as Brian goes, I think Brian might have a bit of a higher rating, but I do think, this is a guess, I do think rewatchability is going to come back into play for Brian's score. So, Oh, uh, yeah. Yep. Think it's always that. there. It's always present. Yeah. That's been my, for three weeks running now, <clears> I've I've complained about that. I do think I think my prediction for Justin is the same. I think it's going to be pretty high because, as is typical with Justin, he's a little slow to watch the movie, just a little bit slower than yep. everybody else. Yep. And, uh, okay. There was a text in the middle of, of last week saying, oh, "I didn't even know that this was an A twenty four movie after I had already finished the movie." So yeah. I mean, yeah. um, but I do think it's going to be high from him. Um, I think pretty average for mm-hmm. Ben. I think Ben's been pretty solid. I think he's going to stay about the same. So okay. We want to jump into ratings now. Yeah, let's do it. I think we uh, we start with um, Justin. This is a rating only. Okay, just the rating. We'll get to thoughts here in a minute. So hit us with your rating. You gave it a ten. Ten out of ten. Wow. Absolutely. Couldn't. Do I thought about giving about it like a nine point eight or something, but I'm going with a ten. Hey. I think I always think I'm going to be a lot more lenient on movies than both of you, though. The the Possibly. first ever ten. In the, the Watch 10. Before You All Die right. podcast. Ben, let's have you next. Um, I'm like at a like a like a nice eight point six, which I think is my 6. highest rating. Um it is. But yeah, eight point six. It is your highest rating so far. Okay. All right. And I'm I'm rounding out. I'm at the low end again. Um I'm <laughs> a trend seven point five. Seven point five. Wow, right? that's actually seven point five. Very low. It's better than what I thought. 7.5. That's actually lower than I thought he would give it. So that's that's a bit surprising to me. So I, I want to know why Brian gave it such a low score. So we're going to get into some spoilers here. So if you haven't watched the movie, you want to watch the movie, stop here and come back at the end of the video. We'll timestamp it so you can pick up on the next movie. So give us your thoughts, Brian. One thing we forgot to say, or I forgot to say, this is my fault. Um, all of our scores averaged together. Justin uh, had a 10, yep. Ben had an 8.6, me had a 7.5. That gives us an overall score of an 8.7. Still the highest movie that we've seen so okay. far. So yeah. still a very good score for the movie. Okay. Even um, with Brian dragging us down. Even even with <laughs> negative Nancy over here in the corner. So I, I do think it's a good movie. Um, you you sure. kind of hit the nail on the head for my biggest problem with it. Was, it's always going to be rewatchability. Mm-hmm. Like, just enjoying the movie um it it dragged a little bit and that's saying something for a 99 minute movie because i was like oh man this one's gonna hit the sweet spot because it's not too long right um i actually do want to be positive for it though i do think the movie um had a lot of redeeming qualities for me i thought it was really cool um the opening line this movie is based on a a real lie or whatever was Mm -hmm. pretty fun and then yeah kind of the final punch to find out that uh was it nini is that it's been a while since I've seen the yeah, movie. Yeah, Karen. What was it, Justin? Um, nine, nine. N-A-I, N-A-I. Yeah, nine, 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 nine. That's what it was. Um, having the actual lady, I don't know if you guys picked up on that, but like the actual <laughs> Nine Eye who had been given yeah. the diagnosis, who had lived for like six years, was the actual actress that played mm-hmm. Nine Eye in the movie. Um, yep. And I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. That was, yeah. That was oh, a very nice oh, thing. Oh, man. And then. And then at the very end, when she said she lived with the age for six months, I cried again. Did you cry, Justin? I cried. I cried twice during this movie. By okay. The way. I was either I was either crying or laughing. Okay. Like yeah. laughing my butt off. Yeah. 
I definitely had we'll a, get to that. I definitely had a teary eyed moment at the end when I realized like it, this is a real like I obviously knew that it was like based on a real film or a real story, but I didn't realize like this was the actual. Like, it, it's not just based on a real story; it is the real story. Like, um, yeah, and then I went yeah. made the mistake and went like read some interviews from the the director or whoever, and she was talking about how like this film at the end of the film during like when they're doing the tour for the movie and, and opening and everything like that's when her grandmother found out they had lied to her like that. <laughs> like they literally had never mm-hmm. told her up until that point. Um, mm-hmm. So I just thought that was like very touching. Um, but yeah, yeah, I definitely had a, a moment of uh, a little bit of break at the end there because, mm-hmm. because it is a sweet, it's, it's a sweet film. Um, yeah. 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 But I don't want to get I don't want to interrupt Justin. Brian was still you, I feel like you had other um, stuff. So really the big thing, like I said, rewatchability. Um the first time I was going through it, it just really it it felt kind of dragged out. Like and um I, I really appreciated the acting in it. I could see the the face, you know, like like the glances and stuff like that. Um but I don't know. For me, it just didn't quite hit all the notes that I wanted it to hit, I guess. Okay. Um, I think, you know, I I had sub- subverted expectations in this one, which I really always appreciate, because I thought that, you know, eventually Aquafina's character being there was going to spill the beans, and eventually it would, you know, blow up in her face and all mm-hmm. that, and she wouldn't be able to, like, keep a strong face, um, and Nine I would figure out in that way. Um, I also figured, you know, there was going to be some, like, big epic moment where they're talking and she's like standing in the background or she's going to like come out and be like, I knew all along, you know, something like that is going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that never happened. And I really appreciated that it wasn't just like a, an easy, well, I feel like that's kind of like the easy out or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like if you're right, you're like, and then the, the hero act, like this is where she finds out. And then this is how the movie changes and stuff like that. Um, I did think they did a, a good job of like kind of tying the circle back together. Um, You know, I really, the part of the movie that I liked the most was they talked about the Western versus the Eastern, um, Mm -hmm. whose business it is to bear the burden Mm -hmm. of death, right? Like in Western. People's lives aren't their own. Yeah. And it was so cool (laughs) to hear, you know, like Eastern, it was like, this is actually pretty common. And Western were like, it's illegal to not tell somebody their diagnosis. You (laughs) You can't keep information from them. But then the Eastern, they're like, I mean we should bear this burden for them and let them enjoy their life. Yeah. And it's like, wow, that's, that's crazy different from here. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. That's probably the thing that I enjoyed the most. Like I literally was sat there thinking like, there, th- I might want to move to an Eastern country if that's how it works. Like, cause like it, the reality of my thinking is like, if I had cancer and somebody didn't tell me, I probably would appreciate that. Like, and I, there's the the flip side of it, of course, which is like, you'd want to do anything you can to fight it and, and, you know, make sure you can live longer. But like the, the idea that it's not the actual cancer that kills the people, but the worry of it yeah. is fascinating. to me. That's like a, that's like a deep, you know, like almost theological type thought, um, you know, mm-hmm. of like, um, of, of what is killing us. So yeah, I thought it was. I thought it was good. I, I will say my score was lower for the same reason your score was lower. I finished the movie. I I obviously thought it was a very good movie, but then I sat there for a while and thought like, would I rewatch that movie or would it be like a, you know, hey, <clears throat> my wife hasn't seen it. Do you guys want to? You want to sit down and watch it? Pr- probably not. Right. Um, it could be if I feel like that might be like if it was like Justin, I'd be like, hey, bro, you want to you want to watch that movie because I know that'd be something he'd enjoy. Um, but it's not one that's just give me more Aquafina. Yeah, it's not just one at the top of my list. Um, (laughs) you know that that I would go like, oh, we should rewatch this because it's got it's an unbelievable film. But it was was, very good. She was great in this movie. I loved her like on screen relationship with Nine Eye. Like Mm -hmm. it it felt like a granddaughter. You know what I mean? Yeah, felt it felt authentic and real. The whole film felt very authentic. I, I know that they were trying to establish that connection from the beginning, but the fact that they were having, you know, weekly phone calls, but she still hadn't seen her in person since mm. she was eight because yeah. she'd been gone for so long, you know? Yep. And then the moment she walks in the room, 
like grandma's already on the stupid child do this stupid child do yeah. that you know and it's like stupid stupid child yeah. that blew my mind i was like are, are they saying that is that a bad translation no she just no. stupid. No. that's the other thing i liked i liked about the um like the showing of the eastern culture because i feel like i i think obviously I'm taking this from the that they were very authentic in what they did because be, because of the who wrote it. I mean, this is her personal story, so she's not just going to like add things in for the sake of filming. Um, and so it felt very authentic. Like I just appreciated the way that that they talked to each other. They all talked to each other. The way that they treated each other. You know, it's like yeah. there's obviously great love, uh, great respect, mutual respect, but also they just kind of say it how it is. And um, yeah. You know, it, it was it was a it was a very good film. I, I enjoyed yeah. it a lot. Obviously, it's my highest score. Um, I really liked uh, when they were. It was Nai Nai and uh, Aquafina's character talking, and in the background, they were doing these more and more elaborate like wedding photos for yeah. the cousin and his yeah. wife. Yeah. And the the framing of those shots was so cool because they were like backlit, basically, like all this beautiful like over the top scenery in the background and then just like these silhouetted like mm -hmm. grandma and, and granddaughter talking mm -hmm. um i kind of enjoyed those scenes uh it was funny because i didn't know where to look like i was i was kind of looking back to see what's happening back there but then i was checking in with the story with you know with grandma and stuff and i don't know it it was a good movie my score my score maybe might not be fair it might be a little bit too low but it just came down to the fact of like it was another movie where i was just kind of like Man, I, I just wish a little bit more happened or a little bit faster. Mm. And I also mm. don't know, like, I appreciate seeing anybody's culture because I'm not familiar, you know, with Eastern culture at all. Um, right. But how much of this movie, like, just by being authentic was just a little bit more of a slog. Like, I, I felt like it could have just been a little bit better for me, at least. It's not so. as culturally relevant for you, necessarily. I guess. Yeah, yeah possibly. I want to hear uh, Mr. Tenno over there's thoughts. Why? Why? How does this even? How does this reach a ten for you? And, and I ask that because I'm that person that like will probably never give a ten because in my book a ten would be no other any other film that comes out beyond this can't be better than. Um, right. I mean, I, I guess it could be equal to, but like, what if you saw a film that was better and then you're going, well, I don't have anything can't get above a 10 necessarily so i want to know your thoughts hit, hit us with it so so my thinking my thinking is is a little bit different my philosophy for movies is a little bit different because for me so first first of all the a24 the studio a24 does incredibly well done movies they i started miss. watching studio a2 you know, they don't miss never um the first studio a24 movie i watched was witch um with anya taylor joy uh, in it, and it's sort of like a Puritan era yeah, no spoiler movie. Alerts, okay. No spoilers. Yeah, yeah, no, no spoilers or anything like that. But, but these movies, these movies like Hereditary, things like that, um, <clears throat> they are kind of on the slow burn side. And I don't, I don't, I don't think slow burn for the sake of slow burn is good, but I think it can be really well done. For me, I really appreciate Studio A two four because. I was already I was already ready for this movie when I saw that because because to me it's like you said they don't miss they they make incredible movies they're so well well thought out and they don't they don't follow like the big blockbuster formulas where let's throw Chris Pine into this movie and uh, his eyebrows and uh, you know make a make a billion dollars or whatever and and there's not it's there's not those big blockbuster you know heavy explosions and cgi and all that kind of stuff in these movies um and to me that's that's good because um it's partially that the the brand carries the name um but also that the movies are just really well thought out and really well done to me a slow burn movie um can be done really well and the reason I say that is because for this movie, you talk about there were so many things that just felt drawn out. And I feel like with a movie of this kind of storytelling has to be. And the reason I say that is because anytime, I can't speak for anybody else, but for me, anytime I have been in that position where there is death looming over the family or death has already happened for somebody, 
and you're 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 waiting on this loss to happen or perhaps you're you're in the midst of feeling that loss time stops right and and it's for me it's it's always been that sort of um i would just love to get this whole thing over with i wouldn't be like um uh what's her name billy's character who just wants to stay in in china and be with, with her uh her nine eye i want i would want to get back home because to me living in that moment is so dreadful that i just don't want to be in it anymore but to me again i think it's also very important that in the midst of you know this kind of loss that's kind of looming over the family's head it's important that we at least for the movie's perspective i think it's important that we saw every dreadful moment and and it, 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 i think somebody kind of alluded to this where every time billy stood up or every time somebody said something <laughs> to billy and and the camera kind of pans yeah. on billy i'm like She's gonna say it. She's gonna tell her. She's gonna yeah. tell her grandmother that she's dying, yeah. because of because of the way they set it up, or mm -hmm. or you know anytime anytime the grandmother like coughs or stumbles or whatever, I'm thinking that's it. She's gonna die. She's gonna fall over right now and die, and and then the whole thing starts. But that's not the way life happens, right? It's like you have to be in it, and you have to feel it, and you have to kind of go through it, and you have to see each person's pain. Like um, the uncle that lives in Japan yeah. when they first got there the first night. And they're just trying to get Billy out of the room. And so he goes to take her around to, you know, walk her to the hotel or whatever. And he's just like, you can't tell her. You can't tell her. You yeah. can't tell her. You can't tell her. You cannot tell her. You cannot. Whatever you do, don't say this to her. And it's just like you have to go through each sort of moment of pain. And I was just like, um, I can't remember the. I was trying to look it up earlier, but I can't remember the actor's name who did Billy's dad. Um, his acting was so incredible. And he said almost nothing in the whole movie. Because he sat there because he knows that if he says anything, he's going to break. And it, like him, him and his brother go off and they have that night where they go drinking and <laughs> yeah. smoking cigarettes yeah. or whatever. And it was just like every every moment was rich with like, for me, every moment, even if it was a slow burn, every moment was rich with like somebody trying to cope with what's going on. And, and you know, and, and they did put little things in there like those wedding pictures that were just bizarre where it's like she's trying to put the daughter or the 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 i guess the bride's head on bow's uh shoulders the groom and um and she's like what are they gonna do in the bedroom like what's going on here they, yeah. they don't even know each other and they've only been together for like three months or something but but to me to me this is when slow burn works this is when those movies where they feel dreadful because nothing's happening works because everybody that's dealing with grief or loss sometimes it's like that or at least for, in my perspective it's like that where mm -hmm. You know, you just got to feel every kind of moment. Yeah. And then for the for the other thing that um, for me, rewatchability doesn't matter in movies because, okay. well, and, and in fact, I'll say I will rewatch that movie. In fact, um, I've got my wife; she's wanting to watch it now because I kind of gave it a glowing review this morning. Um, because I finished watching it two nights ago. Crushed it. Um, crushed it. You know, yeah. better late than never, I guess. But yeah, uh, that's what they say. Um, but but. But I intend to show I intend to show my kid this when he gets a little bit older because these kinds of movies sort of answer the question of like how do you deal with grief, and mm. the answer the answer is not a good answer. It's like, well, they went off and they were just drinking yeah. and, and they all had different ways. themselves and yeah, they all had different ways of grieving. They all had different ways of like processing the information. Like at the very beginning, I couldn't figure out whose mom it was, whether it was the mom's mom or the dad's mom, because the dad's laying in the bed and the mom's crying or, you know, she's trying to be stoic and stuff. And I was just like, who's mo whose mom is this? Like, right. Who's yeah. who's what grandmother of which side? And then you get you even get into her story and like, uh, I don't have a problem with her. She has a problem with me. And and but by the very end of the movie, they're all crying in the in yeah. the taxi because they're having to leave and stuff. And it's just like to me. The movie, it does, at least for me, it does have a little bit of rewatchability. But again, to me, that also doesn't matter in mm -hmm. terms of movies because because some movies just kind of sit with you. And I feel like that's one of the movies that's going to sit with me when I think of like, yeah. when I think yeah. of horrible grief or or, <clears throat> or see the next Aquafina movie that comes out. I hope she does something soon. In fact, I, uh, I after I finished watching it, it was like two o'clock in the morning or something because I don't sleep on vacation. Or ever. Yeah, um, I was but, gonna say, um, literally no different than I your finished, normal. I finished watching it and I was like, "Yeah, let's just pull up YouTube and watch some Aquafina videos." She's an incredible artist. She's really good. I, I really like. She has a song talking about pink pocky 
uh, tips or whatever, like the candies. Um, it's not a song, I guess it's a rap or whatever, but anyway, it's very good. Um, but, um, but yeah, no, I think it was really well done. And I, and I think it was, it was very deserving, at least from my perspective of the 10 out of 10, because it was an important movie. Um, it teaches you something. It's not just about explosions and cool guys on motorcycles or whatever. Um, story of my life. and, and it had, it had a great, it had a great story and, and, I, and all of that kind of stuff. And it had a good ending and it got an emotional reaction out of me. And I, to me, that did feel everything about a movie. I did feel every scene was very rich with uh, it. Call it tension. Call it warmth. Call it. Yeah. The, it was just very. You, you use the the term slow burn. Um, it never really resulted in much, and that's kind of maybe the bomb at the end of the movie is the point like, for that movie. Yeah, I agree. I agree with you there. Um, it, there really should be payoff when you do slow burn like that. But um, I, but, I totally but in, agree. In terms that, of this movie, you don't have to. Every scene was was very well acted, beautifully shot. Um, you know, kind of like what you said, like when Billy is having a reaction, you can see on every actor's face they're like tuned into her, like she's gonna blow it, and you're like kind of believe in that moment. Yeah, this is yeah, the and, then, and then they all start they all start falling apart towards the yeah. end because you got at the wedding, they're all playing that drinking game or whatever. You know what I'm talking <laughs> about? Where they and Bao just keeps losing and losing yeah. and losing and losing. I didn't even know what the drinking game was, but I felt like I was a part of it because yeah. because it was just yeah. so well acted, I guess. But um, yeah. but then he's like off crying at his own wedding and stuff for his fake wedding or whatever. And <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I don't know. I just I thought it, this this is probably one of the best movies I've seen this year, and it was at the very end of the year. But Good. um, but yeah, I really appreciated it. Thought it was important. Taught me something. It was a good story. Will I watch it anytime soon? probably only with my wife just so that she can experience it but but movies like that that teach you something i'll probably show to my son or something and keep it in the keep it in the re reper repertoire nope wardrobe no. on the bookshelf repertoire. Mm, keep it on right. the bookshelf i'll keep, also add keep it on the bookshelf because i am being the negative nancy every week and talking about rewatchability i do think a, a movie for me could hit the 10 out of 10 mark and not, not be rewatchable like i might be like i can never sit through that again but it was a 10 out of 10 I just think rewatchability is a criteria that could boost a movie. Sure. Like if it's something sure. that I'm Absolutely. like, bro, I can't wait to watch that again. I feel yeah. like that's going to be yeah. a big bonus for Cause, me. Because there so. are those movies where you're just like, I need to go back because every every scene is so full of detail. Like, God forbid, I remember when um, IMAX first came out and I would go watch an IMAX movie. And I'm like, I'd have to watch it four times just to see what happened. Because yeah. I feel like I'm watching something that's happening <laughs> over here. And then over yeah. here, there's something else entirely. And so, so I don't do 3D movies. I don't do IMAX movies. I barely go to the theater anymore. Um, that's because you're but, old. Because um, I'm old and my, I mean, my glasses are IMAX glasses now. So I can mm -hmm. wow. see the whole thing. Well, on that note, um, I think we, we, we get a new number. And we pick we a new do. movie and we find out uh, uh, what misery we may be put under or yeah. what joy we might find. I, I right. just can't wait until there's a movie that we've all seen. You know what I mean? Yeah, because we haven't seen uh, I haven't seen any of these so far. Yeah. Well, well, that's right. not true. Four new ones yeah. for me. That's not true. I had watched I had watched Thirteenth when it originally came out, but like I didn't remember a single thing about it. So, yeah. Yeah. For those of you who are new to our podcast format what we do is we roll a random number every week uh we get a movie out of that number and we go away and watch it and we come back together and review it uh so i'm going to randomize the number now we started with 1246 movies we have 1242 movies remaining it's going to be somewhere number. in the 800s hey good guess 833 is this week's number okay right Scroll on to 833. It's going to be a 90 film. 833 is 1989 Drugstore Cowboy. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already out. Drugstore Cowboy? Uh, going on? Let me give it to you real quick. Possibly be about. Drugstore? I, uh, wait, I have, to, I have to make my outrageous guess. It's going to be right. about. It's going to be about. Um, it's it's train spotting, but in uh, America, set in America in the 1800s. Drugs it is rated R. It is yep. a drama slash crime movie, starring Matt Dillon, Kelly Lynch. Matt Dillon. I haven't seen a Matt Dillon movie in forever. Do we want this? You want me to give the synopsis? Yeah, go for it. 
<laughs> it's, somebody's already on, on it's a movie about uh, drug addicts who Pretty rob fun. that rob drug stores as they travel across the country to um, feed their habit. So um, that's that's the short synopsis, basically. I'm just great at guessing tonight. And it, it. and uh, unfortunately, it looks like it might be a hard one to find once again. As far as watchability goes, the only thing I'm seeing is something called Tubi, where you can watch it for free. Um, but I would I'm pretty sure there's some sketchy stuff on that website. Yeah. Um, so can you not get it on Amazon? I have no idea. I'm just going off of what Google had for me up front. So hopefully we'll be able to find it for you. If we do, we'll put it in the description so you can also find it where you where if you want to watch along and um and, uh, and then we will review, review it uh, next week. Review it. Review it. Like there are a couple of places you might be able to watch it for free with ads, like Redbox, uh, um, Roku app, a okay. couple other places. So, All right. Or we can rent it on Amazon, it looks like. so. Okay. Well, that, that is... Uh... That is this episode. We will see you next week. We'll be back on a normal schedule now that the holidays are kind of ending. We will see you next week. Um, so we hope you enjoy and we hope you watch along. And we will see you next time. Bye.